So here's where our decision to not prove theorems will really come into play. Some of the theorems I'm going to state have rather lengthy proofs, which you can read in the slides if you want, but will not be presented in the video. So, theorem. Let V be a finite dimensional vector space. And let H contained in V be a subspace. Then H is also finite dimensional. And the dimension of H is less than or equal to the dimension of V. So we're not going to prove this, but I hope it makes intuitive sense. If dimension is a measure of how big a vector space is, and H is smaller than V because it's contained inside of V, then the dimension of H should not be greater than the dimension of V. Theorem. Let H be a finite dimensional. Then Any linearly independent subset of H can be turned into a basis by adding finitely many vectors. to it. Let's just look at a quick application of each of these theorems. So let's define V to be the set of vectors vectors in R3 such that the third element is zero. Now this set is a subspace of R3. R3 is finite dimensional. In fact, it's three dimensional. 
So without doing any work, V is finite dimensional and the dimension of V is less than or equal to three. In fact, as it happens, the dimension of V equals two. We can form a basis of one zero zero and zero one zero. In reference to the second theorem, well, let's take R3 and let's look at two randomly selected vectors. were almost randomly we do need them to be linearly independent. This of course, is not a basis of R3. R3 is three dimensional. A basis needs to have three elements. But what our second theorem says is that we can turn this into a basis by adding in more vectors. Vectors. Um, in particular, we'll just find a vector in R3 that isn't in the span of these two. Um, one, zero, one, I think should do it. And now we have three linearly independent vectors. You can verify independence using Gauss-Jordan elimination. And this is a basis.